after all that, General Insert shoots Hux, instantly knowing he's the spy because, I guess the Force told him. Goodbye, Hux. A pointless villain no one cared about. Poe wonders why they're not being followed, and considering the Falcon has been sitting captured in a Star Destroyer for quite some time, you'd think they suspect a tracker was placed on it. A common thing in Star Wars. You're sure the homing beacon is secure aboard their ship? But no, that's never brought up. Ray's first line to Finn is, All that matters is finding the Wayfinder. Finding the Exicles. Boosh. Then why didn't she just go with Kylo five seconds earlier, when he offered to take her where she wanted to go? She even says she wants to kill Palpy for revenge for killing her parents! Anything you can do- Finn is like, Ray, you okay? You don't sound like yourself. And Ray is like, Shut up, thirsty nerd! I ain't gonna bang you! Damn! This should have been called Rise of the Friend Zone. Am I right? <laughs> Palpy is mad Kylo ain't killed Rey yet and doesn't want her to become a full-fledged Jedi. Um, why is that a concern? Becoming a Jedi is something that takes long periods of training. Well, supposed to. And requires someone to teach you. It's a title bestowed upon you by a master, right? You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. Nani? Or is it like once you reach a certain amount of force XP, you just level up? Palpy's fleet is gonna be ready in like a few hours. Is he worried she's gonna somehow become stronger in that time? Never mind, maybe he's right. The gang lands on a moon of Endor. A different moon of Endor. Yep, been with me the whole time. And instantly finds the Death Star wreckage that apparently wasn't completely vaporized. Then the dumbest thing ever happens. Turns out that the dagger is actually perfectly cut to match the wreckage of the Death Star in order to locate the Wayfinder. You what? So wait. I thought this was supposed to be some ancient Sith dagger. Did some Sith a long time ago have a future premonition and make the dagger? Why would anyone do that? Or was the dagger made after the Death Star was destroyed? By who? And why? Why would someone who knew the location of this top secret wayfinder carve out a dagger matching a wreckage as a map like this is some national treasure movie instead of just taking the wayfinder and putting it somewhere safe? Why leave a top secret important MacGuffin laying around in a trash heap? The only purpose of making the dagger is to tell someone else where the wayfinder is. Why not just give it to that person? Or if you can't, just say, uh, hey Bobby, the Wayfinder is at this specific GPS location in the main throne room. Now uh, wait a minute, wait a minute! When 3PO decoded the dagger, he did give them a specific GPS location. The Emperor's Wayfinder is in the Imperial Vault at Delta 36, transient 936, bearing 32 on a moon in the Endor system. So what's the point of lining up the dagger? Were the coordinates not for the Wayfinder, but where to stand on the beach to hold the dagger? <laughs> Why would you do that? Is Palpatine like a sphinx? You must answer these riddles three in order to gain passage to me. Did Palpy give the dagger to Ocho so he could come to the Sith planet? If Palpatine knew where the Wayfinder was, why would he leave it in the Death Star wreckage instead of bringing it back to Extacol? Then if he wanted to summon someone, he could just dispatch a dude to go pick them up. I assume that's what he did with General Insert. Somehow he managed to get to Extacol and back without a Wayfinder. It turns out all you need is the correct coordinates to fly through the Red Space Period. Why would Palpatine leave any loose ends lying around? Wouldn't he want to have complete control over who could come to his secret base? Did Ocho make the dagger? For what reason? Maybe he had to hide the Wayfinder, because he knew Luke and Lando were tailing him. Right? WRONG! That makes even less sense! So while Ocho was so worried about being tailed, instead of just writing down the coordinates and putting them in some kind of cipher, or just relying on his memory because he put it in a very specific location, Ocho spent the hours or days required sitting outside the Death Star carving a dagger to match the wreckage, and Luke and Lando just never noticed. Gee, why do you think the spooky guy we're following has spent the last three weeks carving a dagger outside the ruins of the Death Star? I don't know. I think I heard someone say he was a smith enthusiast. <laughs> the wreckage is being hammered away by waves. Wouldn't it erode? What if parts fell away? Nothing about this stupid dagger makes any sense! What the hell is this?! Then a bunch of random not very small Ewoks show up. They say... We picked up a transmission from someone named Babu Frick. 
He said you'd come. He said you were the last hope. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Does that mean Babu Frick just randomly sent a message to this moon of Endor, alerting whoever was there that Rey was going to show up? That's... That's the dumbest thing ever! What if they were First Order people? Ah, it's okay, Babu. I can't stay mad at you. Remember I go black. Oh, black, black. Whatever. It turns out to actually be helpful. Because they're a bunch of random former brainwashed child soldiers like Finn who just also happen to be hiding on this moon next to the Death Star wreckage. Convenient? No! Probably the worst place to hide, considering you would assume that the First Order would be scavenging the Death Star for parts. Ray then demands to be taken to the wreckage. They say they only have boats and have to wait till tomorrow when the water isn't so rough. Um, what? How do they not have spaceships? How do they get to this planet without one? They even have spare parts to fix the Falcon. Did their ships get destroyed when they landed here? But then, where would they get boats from? They're capable of sending and receiving messages because they got Babu's transmission. Isn't there like a space AAA? The lady then goes into how their whole company of First Order troops rebelled and deserted. Wow, Disney, really hammering in how barbaric Rey and her friends are for mercilessly murdering hundreds if not thousands of brainwashed child soldiers. In the Meanwhile, Rey abuses their hospitality by stealing one of their boats because pure Mother Mary Rey is now a dick. I guess because she found out that her dad wasn't God, but Satan. Finn freaks out and does the only thing he's done for every movie in this dumb franchise. Chase Ray. I'm just here to get Ray. Amazing how the main black character in this movie is a bumbling comedic sidekick that blindly chases after the white female lead, and yet the mainstream media doesn't call this movie incredibly racist. I guess since Ray is a strong, independent woman, it's okay. Poor Finn. Another victim of hashtag white feminism. Rey finds the throne room and the magic secret door just opens. She doesn't gotta push a button, display the dagger, or nothing. Nope, just opens for the first happer by. Good thing no scavenger has decided to check on the main throne room in the most high-tech powerful space station in the galaxy during this time. Anyway, she just walks in and there it is. That was easy. Oh wait, never mind. Evil Sansa from Game of Thrones shows up with a comically designed lightsaber, and they fight. Is this Saul and Rey's head? Does being evil give you evil teeth? Maybe that's why all the First Order people are British. I get it. I have bad teeth. Wait, Rey is British. It all makes sense now. Does the Wayfinder have dark Sith energy that makes you hallucinate? Who knows? Because the movie doesn't tell us. Stop asking questions! Then Kylo shows up and... How did Kylo show up and know this is exactly where Rey would be? Did he put a tracker on her ship? Maybe he can read Sith and translated the dagger already. But he wouldn't have been able to line it up. And why is he alone? Where's his Star Destroyer? And the Stormtroopers? And the Knights of- Stop asking questions! Why does Rey stand up with like, comedic timing? The face she's making, the way she pops up, the camera angle, it's like a rom-com and she's embarrassed in front of her love interest. Well, I guess Kylo did just walk in on Rey playing with herself. Good night, everybody. Then Kylo says Rey can't go back to Leia because, um, I don't know, because she had a vision of dark Rey? Fighting an evil you in a vision is like Jedi 101. Then after some very strange acting... Thirsty much. Kylo destroys the Wayfinder, rendering the majority of the movie utterly pointless. Good job! We've only wasted all this time in the grand finale of Star Wars. Kylo again says he'll take Rey to the exact place she wants to go to kill the exact person she wants to kill. But you know, she's an overly emotional woman so she violently attacks him. Jeez JJ, really went full sexist with this movie. Then Leia senses them fighting. Why didn't she sense them fighting like the 30 times before this? Then Orange Nut Yoda literally knows Leia's plan and what's happening with Kylo and Rey because... Fuck it. Then we see the hot, not Ewok, brave the oceans to take Finn to the wreckage. Wow, maybe their shared experiences of being brainwashed stormtroopers as children will blossom into some kind of bond, some relationship, maybe. 
even love. Maybe Finn can finally stop chasing Rey around like a puppy dog and ditch her for an actual healthy relationship. <laughs> no. Get friend zone, sucker. My god, we're like three levels of friend zone deep in this series. We've reached peak friendception. That's right, you're a simp. Finn runs towards Rey in the middle of a laser sword fight, screaming her name from behind and distracting her. <laughs> Why? Wow, it's a good thing Kylo didn't actually want to kill her. I take it all back. Finn's too stupid to deserve happiness. So like, what exactly was his plan here? I know, I'll just shout Rey's name and then she'll know I'm here for her and will be filled with such powerful love she'll defeat the bad boy. Hashtag nice guy. Then Rey screams, no! I assume cause she's tired of Finn's inability to take a hint. Dude, she's just not into you. It's getting a little creepy at this point. And Force pushes him away. For some reason. We see this giant tidal wave coming to crash down on them from behind Kylo. Yet somehow it doesn't affect Finn and Janna who are directly behind Kylo. Nothing in this movie makes any sense. Then they fight and fight and fight and it's so boring because I don't even know why they're fighting. If Kylo wins, he'll take Rey to where she wants to go. And if Rey wins, she still won't have a wayfinder and won't be able to complete her goal. So this is basically just a pointless temper tantrum. Now it's time for some witty back and forth banter. You go first! <laughs> Shouldn't Rey's character be flawed in the earlier movies and become better in the later ones? You know, like a character arc? You know how Luke in the first two movies is. He's immature. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. You can waste time with your friends when your chores are done. Rash. You must complete the training. Oh, I can't keep the vision out of my head. They're my friends. I gotta help them. You must not go. This is a dangerous time for you. Childish. No, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. We're wasting our time. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. Has to keep getting saved by his friends. You're fortunate to be all in one piece. Hear me. I, uh... Talk. Look, someone's up there. Slow down and we'll get under. But then in the final movie, he's grown up and become more mature more steady and reliable. See, his character growth matched his actual physical power. He loses to Vader the first time because he's still immature, both as a Jedi and as a person. But when he grows up, when he matures as a character, he defeats Vader and manages to save his father. The problem with Rey is that in the first two movies, she was too powerful from the beginning. She never needs saving. She's always saving herself and everyone else. You will remove these restraints and leave this cell with the door open. I will remove these restraints and leave the cell with the door open. She started too perfect. She didn't really have flaws to overcome, so she can't have a character arc or a typical hero's journey of self-discovery. So JJ had to try and shove it all into this last movie at the end. But at this point, it just doesn't really make sense. Then Finn does all he can do. Fecklessly scream Ray's name. What a feck. How has Jaina not totally checked out on Finn at this point? Oh my god, I drive this guy out here in the middle of a monsoon and he can't even glance at me. What an ass. Then after some more pointless fighting. Oh my god, who the hell cares? Wait, will Rey actually lose a fight? That's impossible. Leia senses that her girl Mary is about to lose some Sue. So she uses the force to reach out to her son, and then dies. Um, why? Wait, why is she holding that medal she gave to Luke and Han in the first movie? I guess it was Han since she has it now for some reason. Was that in any of the previous movies or did they just throw that in randomly into this one? I thought there were like dice in the previous movie that were important or something. I don't know what's going on. Then while Kylo is distracted by his mom dying, Rey fucking kills him. Damn, I was cold. 
Maybe Rey is inexplicably going to the dark side in this movie for no reason. Then she realizes that Leia died and was like, Wow, I was the asshole the whole time. Also, why is Leia alone in this room as she dies? Shouldn't someone have been concerned when the elderly lady had to be carried off? Wait, why did she have to be carried off? Was Rey and Kylo fighting making her sick or something? Shouldn't R2 warn someone she's dying? Or is this just like prequels logic? She has lost the will to live. Maybe this is really how droids get revenge in Star Wars for being slaves. Eee! What? Oh yeah, she totally died cause like, she was sad and stuffs. Yeah, that's it. Beep boop beep. Whatever. It's Mary Jesus Sue time, and unlike current year, actions have no consequences for Rey, and she just zoop, heals him back up like it ain't no thing. Her expending the energy to heal Kylo doesn't weaken her or impact her in any way whatsoever. Nice. Remember that. <laughs> Then Ray says, I did want to take your hand. Ben's hand. Why do these characters have any sort of emotional connection? She witnessed Kylo kill his own father, the girl who desperately wants parents and was sort of projecting that onto Han. And then Snoke's catfished her last movie. They barely know each other! Considering her own upbringing, Rey should really see Kylo as a selfish, entitled prick who was handed everything and then threw it all away. Meanwhile, Finn over here is getting friendzoned so hard he's gonna go full MGTOW after this. Jeez. Another girl ditching the guy who's always been there for her for the emotionally abusive bad boy. Way to promote negative female stereotypes, JJ. So irresponsible. Then after healing Kylo, she steals his ship? I guess leaving him stranded in the middle of the ocean to die or something. So long, suckers! <laughs> then Finn sees the ship fly away and somehow knows Rey's on it. Wait, if he could see the whole situation, wouldn't they fly over in their ship and try to re-kill Kylo? Oh wait, no, don't shoot me. I'm one of the good guys now. Arrgh! Did he see her heal him from that far away? Stop asking qu Meanwhile, at Leia. Hey, Dad! Then, for some reason, Kylo hallucinates and sees an old disheveled Harrison Ford, who I guess couldn't bother to shave before he came to work this morning. Is he a force ghost? Is he a hallucination? Maybe that's why Leia was holding Han's medal. She was summoning Han's ghost! You know, like, a force seance. You're just a memory. Your memory. Wait, what does that even mean? I don't know about you guys, but when I remember something, I don't literally hallucinate it. Then he has a nice heart-to-heart -heart talk with Ghost Dad and decides to just be a good guy. Wow. That was easy. Who knew turning the bad guy of the movie good was so easy? Maybe after seeing Han, he was worried his other Ghost Dad might show up. Let's go on up and have some sauce. Then for no reason, Kylo throws his lightsaber into the ocean, despite the fact that he's going to need it when he wants to go help Rey kill Palpy. I guess it was red, and we all know only bad guys can use red lightsabers. Or maybe it was because it was a cross, and he's renouncing Jesus for his new god, the Virgin Mary Rey. I threw my evil lightsaber into the ocean, Dad. Are you proud of me? Wait, what was I doing again? Where the hell is my ship? How do I get off this? Then we have Palpy saying that Leia disrupted his plans. I guess he's referring to Kylo's change to the light side? Damn, if Palpy could sense all that from across the galaxy, how the heck could Rey ever hide from him? Why didn't he tell Kylo where she was from the beginning? Wait, why didn't he tell Ochi where she was on Jakku? So he's telling all this to General- Yep, been with me the whole time who says he served Palpy since the original Star Wars? Huh? Who even are you? Was he one of these guys or something? Palpy tells him to come to Extacle to pick up a Star Destroyer and go blow up a planet, cause that's literally his answer for everything. So General Tote's been chillin', you just didn't notice me off screen, goes to the secret Sith planet, without a Sith Wayfinder apparently, and somehow gets a Star Destroyer through the space period, and they blow up that planet full of people, and this all happens in like five minutes. The one Rey and her friends went to get C-3PO decoded. 
You think our heroes will feel any guilt for dragging all those poor people into a war and getting them all killed? Nope. How long has it been like this? First Order took most of the kids a long time ago. Suckers! <laughs> but more importantly, Babu Frick is dead! You could have it all My empire of dirt And considering Kylo destroyed the Wayfinder that they needed 3PO to find, all those people died for nothing. I won't let you down I will make you hurt. Wait a minute! If General been here the whole time, was able to pick up one of the Exical Star Destroyers and blow up a planet with it, wouldn't that mean that the Star Destroyers were ready to leave the planet already? Or was there like only one ship that was ready for some reason? In fact, we're never actually given a reason why all these ships are just hovering on Exical in this weakened, exposed position. Instead of like, I don't know, hovering outside the planet. Or like all flying around the galaxy, blowing stuff up. <sighs> whatever. The plot holes in this movie are already so dense they have their own gravitational well. That's probably why the ships can't fly up. It's so dense. Apparently, they're just letting Leia's corpse sit around and stink up the room. And considering Carrie Fisher actually died, seems a little distasteful to keep showing her character's corpse again and again in the movie. Whatever. Lando's here! Lando Calrissian is a positive role model in the realm of science fiction fantasy. Poe's first act as new General of the Resistance is to promote Finn to General 2. Living proof that nepotism is alive and well. Bumbling, Ray-obsessed comedic sidekick Finn is a general now. Damn, no wonder Leia passed command a purple hair prom dress over Poe. Ray flies Kylo's ship to Luke's crappy island. Wait, she stranded Kylo in the middle of the ocean so that she could strand herself somewhere else? It's like poetry. What, so much for her friends in the galaxy. Just let old Palpatine have it. That'll prove you're not dark side. Oh wait. Then Ray throws Luke's lightsaber into the fire. Luke catches it, looks directly at the camera, and flips off Rian Johnson. That actually happens in the movie, I'm not making that up. You can actually hear Mark Hamill trying not to laugh through his line read. A Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. Then we find out that both Luke and Leia knew Rey's parentage the whole time, and they never told her! We have purposely trained him wrong, as a joke. Wait, how the heck did Luke and Leia even know Rey is Palpatine's granddaughter? Stop asking questions! Luke says some things are stronger than blood. Then you remember that Luke also supposedly came from an evil bloodline too, and realize how much lamer and unemotional this is compared to the original. Anywho, turns out Luke trained Leia to be a Jedi. All right, I guess. Wait, if Leia was a Jedi, why were they so desperate to have Luke join them when they had their own badass Jedi with them the whole time? Oh wait, she says she sensed that at the end of her Jedi path her son would die. Um, oh, okay. So she quits being a Jedi and her son still dies. Loser. So what's even the point of adding a Leia lightsaber that has no emotional weight or purpose in the movie? Merchandising! Where the real money from the movie is made! I mean, wouldn't it be more symbolic if Rey defeats Palpy with both Anakin and Kylo's lightsabers? The two people Palpy manipulated to the dark side, yet they both eventually turn on him. Ray says she can't get to the Exticles, but Luke's like, don't worry, the Wayfinder's in Kylo's ship, dum-dum. Good thing it didn't get destroyed yet. Convenient. And also, hey, here's my old ship. Convenient. 20 years of water damage, and it still runs fine. Wait, why didn't Luke just stop her from destroying Kylo's ship in the first place? Wait, why didn't he fly to the salt planet in person to fight Kylo instead of projecting if he could just fly in his X-Wing? Wait, if Force Ghosts can summon lightning, touch things, and use telekinesis, why aren't they using Force Powers to, like, actually help the Resistance fight against- Stop asking questions! 3PO instantly gets his memory back from R2. So yeah, the whole sacrifice sequence was entirely pointless. Then they plug into Robot Cone, and Finn says... All the information you need for an airstrike on Exegol. Um... What does that even mean? 
I thought Hoochie never made it to Exicle. That's why he had the knife, and he was trying to find out how to get there. Oh wait, are they implying that he did get to Exicle, and then he hid the Wayfinder in the ruins of the Death Star and made a knife so he would remember where it was, but then also forgot to wipe his droid's memory? Cause that's even stupider. Why would his robot have any information about Exicle? Boosh. Lando just said Ochi was some kind of bounty hunter guy. Why would Palpatine give him any technical information about Star Destroyers being constructed? And even if he did, for some reason, have that information, it would be 20 years old. And those Star Destroyers were underground until, like, yesterday. Why would any of this information be relevant? How does this robot have all this information? Ray then transmits them the data to get there, cause I guess the whole planet has a full sphere covering it in evil fog. Even though we only see it covering this tiny area. Though even if it did surround the whole planet, why can't they just light speed through it? You know like in the first sequel movie? How are we getting in? Their shields have a fractional refresh rate, keeps anything traveling slower than light speed from getting through. We're making our landing approach at light speed? Or like in this movie? And why would they have Rey wear Luke's oversized helmet? It's like a five-year-old trying to play police officer. Like Moses, Rey parts the Red Sea so the Resistance fighters can come back and go kick the Pharaoh's ass. Chewie looks pretty depressed because everyone he cares about is dead. But Mary is like... Come on, buddy. We need you. That was easy. Then comes some of the dumbest, most convenient, lazy plot nonsense in order to give our heroes a way to win. For some reason, the Star Destroyers can't activate their shields until they leave the planet. Why? And the ships need some special navigational thing to help them take off the planet. Why? I would understand getting through the period cloud, but why the planet? The Resistance and TIE Fighters have no trouble flying around. Maybe when old Palpy conjured thousands of Star Destroyers, he forgot to make it so they can go... up. Uh, kinda seems like a design flaw. That must be why he had to use the Force to lift them all out of the ground. Why would they need a signal to go up? Thank you, but I don't need any help! I assume, like, maybe it was a gravity thing? Like the ships were designed to only exist in space or something and they didn't have enough thrust to break atmosphere? But a signal wouldn't help with that. Poe seems to imply it's cause the atmosphere's something something so the computers can't work properly. But like, are you telling me all these super high-tech ships don't have manual controls? Can't a guy just stand by the window and yell back to the pilot which direction up is? Keep going! You're good! You're good! And oh yeah! How does Poe know all this? Why would Dio have any of this information? Then silly old Brandy Buck is like, Hey, why don't we just lightspeed kamikaze the whole fleet like in the last movie? Then off screen in ADR, because they forgot to address this while filming, so they just got whatever actor was available for some coverage, Finn off screen says, Don't be silly, that moves one in a million. Psst. Hey, Rian, maybe you should think about stuff like how it's not a good idea to introduce something that will destroy the entire concept of space battles in a series of movies that heavily centers around space battles. Just a thought. Then we learn General Finn's plan is to beg for aid from just random strangers and stuff. All right, I'm glad our heroes in this movie are so proactive and their actions lead them to victory and not just random convenient things happening. Oh wait, it's the exact opposite of that. You know, now that I think about it, who are all these people? I thought the entire resistance got wiped out last movie. How do we build a rebellion from this? just write some dumb crap. Nobody cares. Now I want to focus on this extra for a second, as they provide the perfect metaphor for this movie. They run into frame, all action-y, with inspiring music and an inspiring voiceover, just to slap the hood of a spaceship and tell it to take off. Dressed up action that leads nowhere and is ultimately pointless. Ray appears on Exticles. Where did the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people require the man these ships come from? Are they clones? Did Palpy conjure them? Are they all brainwashed soldiers? Not only was the largest fleet in history constructed in secret, but millions of children were kidnapped by both the First Order and Palpatine, and planets all around the galaxy just let it happen. I guess Palpy doesn't want Rey killed, because none of the ships open fire on her or even try to stop her. 
kill the girl. Liar! Wait a minute. Why did Rey think she could just wander into this giant fleet of ships and not instantly die? Right now, she's operating under the idea that Palpatine wants to kill her. Why did the Emperor come for me? Why did he want to kill a child? Because he saw what you would become. So she just blindly, with no plan, idiotically wanders into the monster's den. Great. I'm glad our protagonists are so incredibly smart in this movie, and aren't just constantly saved by plot conveniences. No, they're stupid! So, wait. The thousands of Star Destroyers all have thousands and thousands of TIE Fighters in them? How the hell would these guys last more than two seconds? The First Order realizes they're going after the navigational beacon, so General, hey, hi, I've been here the whole time, says... Switch over the source of navigation signal to this ship. We'll guide the fleet out ourselves. Wait, what? I thought the whole point of the dumb beacon was because the ships couldn't fly up for some reason. So wait, can only his ship lead the other ships, or can any ship lead them? If one of the ships could do it, why would you even build a beacon in the first place? Did he have to use the beacon to get his ship off the planet, but you only need to use it once? And after your ship loses its space virginity, it suddenly becomes an alpha chad and can tell the other ships what to do? Stop asking questions! Then Finn says he knows they're switching the signal to that ship, and Friendzone is like, how do you know that? And Finn is like, feeling. You're not even trying, man! So they have to land on the Star Destroyer. And General Hey, how are you? is like, jam their speeders. But they can't. Because... What? What are you doing? If the plan was just to blow up this completely out in the open antenna, why would they have a bunch of people riding space horses ready to go? How would you know to have that prepared? Why would you even need to do that instead of just physically blow up the antenna? So guys, how do we end our climactic Star Wars sequel series? Well, we did an office poll of everyone's five-year-old children, and they all said their favoriteest part was when the teddy bears attacked the mean men with sticks. Put something like that in your movie. Huh? What? I mean, oh, sure, that sounds great! Hey, can I randomly put a bunch of my friends from Lost and other projects into this movie for no reason? Of course! Meanwhile, Ray shows up to kill GLaDOS. Okay, look, we both said a lot of things that you're going to regret. Also, there's some giant crowd of, like, Sith people. Are... are these real people, or like, the ghost of Sith Miss Past? Stop asking- Then Palpto says he never wanted Rey dead. He wanted her to become the Empress of the Sith? What?! So, wait, has he been lying to Kylo this entire movie? Was he trying to use reverse psychology? Whatever you think I want you to do, just do the opposite. Or is he lying to Rey now? What is happening in this movie? This is a film about space wizards no, that you we can- you shut the hell up! Then Palpdos tells Rey he's like the amalgamation of all the Sith or something, and that he wants her to kill him because then he'll possess her and she'll become the new Queen Sith. You what?! This whole movie, he keeps telling Kylo to kill Rey! Kill Rey! It's so important to kill Rey! And now he's like, Rey-chan, please kill me, senpai! We now have so many plot holes, we've reached the event horizon! And no, I don't mean like it's so dense it's created a black hole. I mean it's a literal hell dimension where everything is awful! So if Palpy wanted Rey to kill him, why would he tell her the one thing that would stop her from killing him. If he had said nothing and just sat there, she would have just killed him, and his goal would have been accomplished. Does she have to know and do it willingly? Are the Sith like vampires and you have to invite them in? If he wanted to possess her, why would he tell Kylo to kill her? Was his plan to originally possess Kylo? I mean, that would have made more sense, since apparently he's been manipulating Kylo from the beginning. Wait, no, that doesn't make any sense, because if he wanted to possess Kylo, he could've just done that in the beginning of the movie. But now he's like, ah, screw it, Rey's here. Might as well possess her. Can Palpy just kill himself and then possess her, or does she have to do it? How is it that this movie is like 75% exposition, and yet nothing is ever explained? I take it all back. Palpy isn't GLaDOS. He's Wheatley. Ah, but, ha, I, I have actually made my actual first mistake 
by telling you my plan just now. Oh, it's me old Achilles heel again. Ah, oh, fate. Ah, oh, cruel mistress. Then BB-8 puts a thing in a thing, and they drop bombs in a shaft to blow it up. Hey, wait a minute. Finn said they needed a ground assault on the Star Destroyer to blow up the navigational array. But why? It's literally just a big antenna. Why can't you just... shoot it? They very specifically said that shields don't work on Exticol because of something, something atmosphere. They can't activate their shields until they leave atmosphere. Then it turns out that blowing up the antenna would actually have been a better plan, and Finn's a complete idiot because whatever they just blew up can just be reset via the computers, and now they actually do need to just blow up the antenna. General Finn, everybody. Then Finn says he can hear the computers being reset in the middle of a war zone. Remember when Finn was just a janitor? Well, at least to fix his screw-up, he says he's gonna stay behind and do... something. And Friendzone says she'll stay and help him. Think this act of sacrifice will go noticed by Finn, and maybe he'll stop swooning over Ray and give this poor, thirsty girl a chance? Nope. Jeez. Why is everyone in Star Wars after the originals just needlessly involved in toxic relationships? Then Palpley goes on about striking him down in hate. Could you just, would you just jump into that pit there? That deadly pit? You're saying to yourself, why should I jump in the pit? I'll tell you why. Guess who's down there? Your parents! You're not adopted after all. It's your natural parents down there in the pit. Should have mentioned it before, but I didn't. What if Rey kills him in not hate, but like to end the war and protect the galaxy? Jedi kill people all the time. Like all the time! What are the rules here exactly? If we don't know what the rules are, there can't be any tension, because we don't understand the motivations or the stakes. Then the moon roof opens. Take one more look at your precious human moon! And Palpley tells Rey if she becomes Empress, she'll control the fleet and can save her friends. Finally! Something that sort of maybe makes sense. I mean, it doesn't really make sense, because she'll be possessed, so like, will it just be Palpy in her body, or does she regain some semblance of her personality, or... Stop asking completely logical questions. Then Kylo shows up! What?! How? With what ship? General, oh you didn't notice me, was told by Palps that Kylo betrayed them, and he took Kylo's Star Destroyer back to Exicle. Oof. While Kylo was hallucinating on the Death Star ruins. Wait! How did General... You know me, I went to college with Hammerod. Hey! Usurp control of the First Order. Kylo was in charge because he was Snoke's number two. And also, you know, could just kill you if you questioned him. Who do you think you're talking to? You presume to command my army? Our supreme leader is dead! We have no ruler! But General, your face is familiar, but I'm not sure we've ever met, is just some... guy who also murdered the most recognizable First Order leader in front of everyone. Sure, Kylo killed Snoke, but no one knows that. What happened? The girl murdered Snoke. Attention everyone, I have just been informed Kylo Ren is a traitor. I will now be assuming control of the First Order. Um, what do you mean he's a traitor? Emperor Palpatine told me via hologram, Kylo has joined the Resistance. Can we see that transmission? No. Wait, we don't serve Palpatine! Why do we care what he says? He's about to give us an armada. Uh, didn't you kill General Hux on the main bridge like an hour ago? He was also a traitor. How do you know he was a traitor? Cause he let the Resistance prisoners escape on purpose. How do you know that? I just do! Stop asking questions! Uh, it kind of sounds like you just label everyone above you in the chain of command a traitor, so you can take control from them. Guards, kill that man. Okay, now you sound like Kylo. So where did he get that TIE fighter from? That's a good question. And the answer is... 